Hey guys, Public Safety. Hey guys, hey, Public Safety Network here, guys. Uh, I decided to do a video. Um, as you know, this topic covers most public safety forums uh, and a lot of other security aspects. And one of the jobs I get asked about the most is I was an armored truck guard. Uh, for guys who don't know what that is, it's the big trucks you see that transport money from banks to merchants to uh, a whole host of other places. They, they do transport other things other than money. I like jewelry, government documents, but mostly what I did was was money. Uh, I get asked about this a lot, and it actually comes up a lot, especially when I interview for new jobs. Uh, it's one of the experiences I have that I get asked about the most because uh, it kind of shows responsibility. A lot of people, you know, you get a gun, you get a truck, and you get put in charge of millions of dollars. And so to a lot of companies, whether it's security or not, it looks really, really good. Uh, so I'm going to kind of talk about how I got started in that career field and uh, kind of like if you're interested, I know a lot, there are a lot of people who aren't in the industry who kind of have these myths or uh, rumors that they hear and I'm kind of going to dispel those. Uh, if this video does well, then I'm probably going to do another series, uh, more of a frequently asked questions type video. This is kind of going to be kind of more of a basic overview on how to get into the industry and you know, maybe some, some basic details about it. So the kind of process you're gonna start with is you're gonna apply. It's like any other jobs, you go to the website uh, for whatever armor truck company you work for. There's the big ones that most people have heard of, like Brinks, Loomis, uh, Dunbar, and then there's uh, smaller companies that are starting to kind of pop up, especially with the growth of like the medical marijuana industry and the recreational marijuana industry. Uh, so you put an application online, time goes by, uh, you're gonna get asked some, at least the company I worked for asked personality questions, you know, the agree or disagree type questions. Um, and then you're going to kind of get, after that, you're going to, it's going to, the results are going to get sent to the company and you're going to kind of get, uh, they had a color coded system, which was red, yellow, green. If you got a red, uh, there's certain things in that assessment that they really didn't like very much. And so you're kind of automatically just booted out of the process. Next is going to be yellow. That's actually what I ended up getting. It's, you're still in the process, but if they call you for an interview, um, they're, they're going to have some questions, uh, some clarifications on certain answers you gave. And then obviously green is, you they like your answers, you're good to go, and you move on to the interview stage. Uh, the next up is you're going to get called for an interview. Again, this is all specific to the company you work for. This is kind of how mine did it. You're going to call for an interview, usually by the assistant manager, uh, assistant branch manager or the branch manager. Uh, they're going to set up an interview time. You're going to show up. Uh, you're going you're gonna to sit down with them, and they're going to kind of talk about experience, uh, stuff like that, job expectations, et cetera, et cetera. And they're going to ask you s some questions. Uh, first, it'll probably be the clarification. Like I said, I had yellow. And so they asked me to clarify on certain answers I had given. Um, and then they're going to start asking you another series of questions more about uh, in the line of kind of your course of your actions type thing. And one of the questions that was asked of me is, do you believe that you could take the life of someone else to save your, you or your partner's life? Now, most people don't know the answer to that until they've actually been in that type of situation. But this question was more to weed out people that knew in their heart of hearts that they could never take the life of someone else, even in self-defense. And that's kind of what this question was gauging. It, would also, it was also gauged to see people that were kind of more, I guess you could say, enthusiastic about it. And that would also that was also kind of a red flag for them. Um, so after that, after the interview, uh, you know they're going to say, okay, you know we like you. We're going to move on with the process, and you're going to start filling out paperwork so they can do um, background checks, credit checks, uh, employment checks, and they do actually check. So make sure you're honest, guys. Uh, the background check, obviously, you know felonies, misdemeanors uh, like domestic violence that prevents you from carrying a gun are going to be a big no-no, and then anything involving theft, so things like shoplifting or, or petty theft or like that, a lot of times is going to knock you out of the process because you're being put in charge of you know millions of dollars. Um, they're also going to do a credit check. Um, I can tell you this for a fact, guys, you don't have to have you know a perfect credit score, six, 700 credit score to get on. Uh, it is a factor. Uh, it's usually an insurance liability, and I've had guys that have got, they have had like five fifties and a little under 600. That's still gotten on. Um, I mean, I had, I think, in the 600s when I applied. So, I mean, I, I didn't have anywhere near perfect credit. Um, so, they're going to check on that, and they're going to check employment history. Uh, they're going to verify all your employers. And I, they do actually check. I did have one employer who did not exist anymore. 
who had uh, gone under and so there wasn't really a way for them to contact me so they had me get other means to show that I actually did work there so if you pass all that you're gonna move on to the next part of the process which is going to be um, a DOT physical and for those of you who don't know uh, most are almost they believe all, almost all of our truck companies are governed under the US Department of Transportation as commercial drivers um, it's just weird because they're double you're under DOT but then you're also usually managed by the same security agency that manages your security uh, companies and so at that point what you're going to do is you're going to go to usually a clinic and you're going to get physical and they're going to make sure that you're in decent enough health you, know, you don't have high blood pressure or you have any conditions that would inhibit your ability to drive you know on the, on the road for long hours um, so you're going to talk to usually a, a physician's assistant MP or an, a nurse practitioner and they're going to kind of evaluate you and say yeah I know he's healthy enough to drive and they're going to issue you a little card and the card's good for two years and every two years that you're in this position you have to re redo the physical again and it's also the same way with you're going to do a drug and alcohol screening so they're going to you know make you pee into a cup and make sure that you don't have any drug metabolites or um, alcohol in your system and before I let you know guys at least in the state where I'm at um, medical marijuana doesn't matter so you, even if you have a medicinal card you're still allowed to smoke marijuana while you're working at this job and so that, that will eliminate you from the process. So if you do that, uh, you're gonna move on to the last part of the process, which for me, they made me take a uh, kind of like a open book test on uh, US Department of Transportation regulations governing um, interstate transportation. Uh, and the last thing they're gonna make you do is a road test. And what the road test is going to do is just make sure that you have the, function, uh, the functionality to be able to drive the truck. Uh, and that you also drive it safely. So obviously if you're, you know, blowing through lights and stuff on your test drive, it's probably safe to say uh, this job is not for you. So if you're, uh, after all that, a lot of times the uh, managers are like, yep, you're hired, uh, you know, here's your hire date. Um, in my state, not only do you have to be regulated by DOT, you have to have a security license. Um, we have a lot of guys that either come in that uh, that just have unarmed licenses, which means they can't carry guns, which means they can't generally work on the trucks right away. Um, a lot of them can work inside the vaults, or we keep a lot of the and pro do a lot of the cash processing. And a lot of people will start there, and then uh, it, when they get their uh, armed permits, uh, they can start working on the trucks. And that's actually what happened to me. I went and didn't have my armed license yet, and so I kind of had to wait about a month or so, take the class, and then get all my paperwork processed before I was. Uh, issued an armed license uh, so that's kind of the whole process guys like I said I will say it was a good job of one of my favorite jobs actually there's a lot of good perks to it um, and it's like I said it's what you make of it guys you know it's the pay isn't always the best but you know with the amount of hours you get um, you can actually make a, a pretty decent living doing it you know I enjoyed my time there and I would I would definitely do it again not so much as a full-time job but probably part-time work so if any of you guys are thinking about getting into the industry this is kind of a good starting point um, and like I said, if this gets enough attention, enough likes, and people kind of enjoy it, I'll probably make this into a series, uh, maybe stories, and then uh, maybe some frequently asked questions. Uh, you got to remember, though, I can't always divulge everything. I did dis sign a, a non-disclosure agreement kind of saying that I wouldn't uh, reveal certain things about the industry. But So I'm going to probably talk about it more from a general viewpoint. But uh, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, keep watching my other videos.